I've said it before, I'll say it again, and I'll keep saying it till it sinks in. If you're against nuclear energy, I don't want to hear one word you have to say about global warming. And it's more than enough to make me conclude that it's really about one of two things. Either it's about not solving the problem so that they can perpetually complain about it and provide one so-called solution after another, or it's because they have interests in solar and wind. And so here we have this article a few days ago by Christopher LaForge, which is just chock full of the same fear-mongering we've seen, so it doesn't look like it's going away anytime soon. He laughably states, Here, I wish to address misstatements and misinterpretations surrounding attempts to revive the deceased nuclear industry, while himself stating misstatements and misinterpretations. And he's even nice enough to summarize those for us. In short, reactors take too much time to build, are too expensive, have too great a carbon dioxide footprint, and are the most dangerous form of electrical generation ever engineered. Let's take these in reverse order. As I've shown numerous times, if anything, nuclear is the safest form of power by far, with just 90 deaths per thousand terawatt hour. That's even lower than wind at 150, rooftop solar at 440, and hydro at 1400. So, I can actually say, without a hint of hyperbole, that if you're against nuclear, you want people to die. And if you do it by lying to people and saying it's dangerous, it's even worse than a lie. It's a danger to humanity. The CO2 footprint of nuclear energy is the lowest as well, when you factor in all costs of production and operation, again, even below solar and hydropower, and on par with wind, particularly if you look at modern generation 4 reactors. So by the same token, if you believe the global warming kills as many leftists do, then again, your fear-mongering is dangerous and will result in people dying. When he says they take too long to build and are too expensive, this is not in any way true when you consider the overall output given the life of the reactor. Assuming idiot politicians who believe the same screwy crap that this guy does don't shut them down prematurely, the profitability of nuclear is way above solar and wind, and even on par with coal. I'm including a video from Illinois Energy Prof comparing the economics of nuclear to natural gas. It takes 18 years for nuclear to become more profitable than gas, but considering that gas plants only last 25 years and nuclear reactors can last 40 to 60 years, there's just no comparison. Over the long run, nuclear can be delivered as cheaply as coal, under 4 cents per kilowatt hour. Currently, Americans are paying on average 13 cents per kilowatt hour, so that sounds like a deal to me. Thinking this through further, this means that it'll take longer for all the people of the world to have the cheap, safe energy that they'll need to lift themselves out of poverty. Meaning, again, it's dangerous fear-mongering that will result in people dying. So basically, every single one of his points is wrong, and more than that, is dangerous to human life if he convinces people of it, as the nuclear fear-mongers have already done for decades. He then goes into how small modular reactors, or SMRs, aren't really safe or new and don't give us any advantages. I'm not going to go into his crap, I'm just going to link to some more Professor David Ruzik videos. One is about the XE100 and the other Natrium, as well as a video where he covers Generation 4 reactors in general, which you'll notice LaForge here doesn't even mention. And while I'm at it, I'm going to link to Ruzik's video, Dispelling the Myths of Nuclear Energy. And just to let you know, Everything he says about the new scale reactor is an outright lie. He deliberately lied about it being the model in the forefront. No, that's natrium. But I guess it's easier to lie about new scale. The significant design flaws, the only one of which he mentions is placing the steam generators inside the reactor vessel, is one of the things that make it safe. New scale, like natrium and the others, is walk away safe. Worst case scenario, you just do nothing and the reactor stops. Even if there's no operator intervention, no power, and no new water pumped in, it will safely shut down and stay cool. 
There's enough water to cool it for at least 30 days, and even if it loses water after that point, reactions will have dropped to the point that simple air convection is all that's needed to cool it. They're not made safe by clever engineering or trained personnel or water pumps or backup generators or anything like that. They're made safe by the laws of physics. What way is there to describe this fear-mongering against a safer alternative other than dangerous to human life? Next outright lie. Lazard, a leading financial advisory firm, estimates the cost of utility-scale solar and wind to be about $40 per megawatt hour. The same figure for nuclear is four times higher, about $160 per megawatt hour. I gave the cost of nuclear earlier. That amount translates to about $35 per megawatt hour, not $160. And he also mentions the storage of radioactive wastes for tens of thousands of years, when, as everyone can see from my sources, these modern reactors burn all of the actinides, including the transuranics, leaving no high-level wastes. They just leave low-level waste that degrades below background levels in just 300 years. And he closes off his dishonest and dangerous greed with, Solar and wind electrical generation and large-scale energy storage provide the affordable, scalable, safe, and truly renewable means to a 100% carbon energy-free future. It is the lowest cost option. Remember, the fuel is free. Uh, no, it's not free, and it's not reliable either. Again, I'll point to the contrasting experiences of France and Germany. France went nuclear, and their carbon output dropped. Germany went renewable, and their carbon output went up. Because renewables were so expensive, they couldn't deploy them at anywhere near the scale they needed, and they're so unreliable, the backup natural gas generators were generating more electricity than the renewables. And they're learning the lesson now, after the Russo-Ukrainian war and the loss of the Nord Stream pipelines has put them in a very serious situation this winter. Shutting down all those nuclear plants has put them in a life-threatening situation. And according to a recent report from Reuters, their half-trillion-dollar solution may not be enough. Energy imports are still down 27% from where they were this time last year. So yes, they're absolutely regretting the decision of former Chancellor Angela Merkel to prematurely shut down all their nuclear facilities. Chancellor Olaf Scholz has ordered the three remaining nuclear plants to continue operating after all, but since the shutdown was already underway, they won't be producing any additional power until the spring. So thanks to the efforts of people like LaForge here, Germany is in for a very rough winter. But they are nice enough to close out with a confirmation of what I said at the beginning about these people. Christopher LaForge is a certified master trainer in photovoltaic technologies at Great Northern Solar in Port Wing. Yep, he works for a solar energy company which makes money installing, maintaining, and decommissioning photovoltaic systems. I'm gonna listen to him like I'm gonna listen to Maxine Waters' opinion on finances. Yes, he wants to spread fear-mongering so he can sell his far more harmful product, and he doesn't care how many people die as a result. So thanks for watching, comments for the coming God shares for the Share Throne, hit like, subscribe, and the bell, and go to donate.bogosity.tv to keep these videos coming. Thanks again, and until next time, stay strong and be free.